Good evening and welcome to Bellarmine High School Gymnasium in Santa Clara. We are here for the CIF Reebok CCS quarterfinals. I'm Gary Ty, along with Dan Gruber, and tonight the Harbor, Pir Harbor Pirates meet the pioneers of Cupertino. Harbor comes in as the four seed, and Cupertino comes in unseeded. They have a record that's 11 and 15, so they're under 500. Could this be a Cinderella story for Cupertino, Dan? Well, maybe it's not as much of a Cinderella story as their seeding may indicate. Cupertino plays in the tough De Anza League where they beat league champion Fremont, who's a second seed in the Division II. They've suffered through a season of illness and injury, and what's important from a coach's perspective is how they're playing now, and they're really on a roll right now. Well, that's true. Uh, uh, Holtorf, uh, the coach of uh, Cupertino, said that at, at one point during the year they played with only seven players. Uh, they had a, a lot of illnesses, a lot of uh, injuries, as you mentioned, and uh, so that's very tough for a team to come through like that. They have a shot of Cupertino. You see them getting ready. They rely mainly on two of their players. Chris Soto, their guard. He scores 11 points per game. He's a six-foot senior. And also their big man, uh, Darren Thorpe. He's a 10-point-per-game man, and uh, he's about six foot eight. So he's a pretty good player. And you now you look at the Harbor lineup, and here you see us again. Yes, he's a big guy, and they, they are a big team. And they don't have, I think Harbor has the edge in quickness, and it's pretty toss-up with the height with six, nine and a half, Tim Young and with Sam Cross and, and Zach Page in there. So height may be a toss-up, hopefully, for the Harbor Pirates that they have a quickness edge. You know, I was talking to the coach before the game about Cupertino, and he has a couple of famous alumnus that come from there. We've got Kurt Rambis, oh, who yeah, plays with Phoenix and Santa Clara Sons. University right up the road. Right. And then Judas Prada, who was the uh, former Cupertino player, who's now an assistant with the Denver Nuggets. Well, they didn't announce the uh, starting lineup. Both teams just head out to the center court there. There we see number 55, Darren Thorpe. He'll be jumping against the big guy, the big freshman for Harbor, Tim Young. And we're ready to get underway. Referee Robert Roby throws the ball. Controlled by Cupertino. That's, that's going to be a big match. A match of 55s in the middle because Thorpe has about 80 pounds on him. And that's... That's going to be tough for the freshman, Tim Young. Well, Tim Young had such a great defensive game uh, last game. So he, he, he's up for the challenge, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Out on top to Soto. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Kubota. There's Soto, number 30. He's a, there's the big guy. Oh, covered down well on him. The defensively, Harbor's got to be fairly happy. They're a little slow right now, a little tentative, but still... They have to be happy that they haven't given up an easy shot right there. Good help. Cupertino couldn't get it in. Soto threw it a little bit over there. Big guy, Darren Thorpe. Just a little out of his reach. Cupertino, I was talking to an official who, who uh, officiates a lot of the games, and he said Cupertino is a real Jekyll and Hyde team. And they played that way the whole season. Nice tip by Young. Uh, let's see, they give the ball Harbor to Harbor. Harbor. That's going to be tough. They've got to be tough right to begin with Harbor. Sometimes they have a tendency not to come out hard. And when you play on a Jekyll and Hyde team, you want to get on top of them quick. There's Guzman. He's a big three-point shooter for Harbor. Ship Steed with the ball into Young. Bad pass by Young. Picked off by Josh McGee. The boat on top over to McGee. Into the big man. He's going to have trouble. Throws it back out. McGee misses. Offensive rebound. That's a couple now for Cupertino. They're doing a good job inside. I think Harbor is really doing a good job inside right now. Ooh. And if they continue that, you take out one of their big assets, Cupertino's assets, number 55, Darren Thorpe. Guzman tries to get it in. Broken up nicely by Thorpe. There's Soto to the hoop. Nice trouble by Soto. One of the reasons people believe that Cupertino is such a Jekyll and Hyde team is the play of their point guard, and that's Soto, that he sometimes he comes to play and sometimes he doesn't. So I think that's important for Harbor to take him out of the game early. Crossman with a nice shot from the corner. Study Sam, study Sam. He's two to two, 5.56. We're just underway in the first quarter here. The little guy, Josh McPhee, five foot eight senior guard, puts it down. 
That's interesting. They're starting in a, in a 3-2 or a 1-2-2 zone against Harbor. And I, I really have a feeling that this is a type of zone that possibly Harbor can exploit well. Right. Shipsky gets right in there, gets his two, and ties up the ball game at four apiece. I think if Robert uh, Shipstead has a, has a big game here, I think that will really, really take a lot of pressure off Jose and, and Zach Page to fill up some of the to fill up some of the scoring holes. Well, Eddings threw up a big air ball there. Crossing to Guzman. Tim Young, big freshman, had a block. Zach Page follows, scores, and he's fouled. I think they got a piece of Big Tim in there, but uh, they'll take a three-point foul. Three-point play, excuse me. Hopefully they can convert. This is one of the problems Harbor had in their last game. They shot very poorly from the free throw line. Now, I don't believe, I've watched Harbor all season, I don't believe they're that poor of a free throw shooting team, but sometimes they just get in a rut like they did last game. Oop. Good read. The free throw right there. Guzman has 75 three-pointers this year. He's dangerous out there. He doesn't seem to be looking for a shot, though. Page. Good this work. The inside shot. He misses the layup. This is the part of the game where I think Harbor has to dominate the transition. Oh, beautiful shot. Chipstead got sliced right in the midsection and still had enough composure to put it in, put it through. Now, Chipstead's a good free throw shooter. Earlier we were talking about uh, Jose Guzman. I think he's going to get his shots on the baseline against this type of zone. And I think once he gets hot from the baseline, they're going to have to extend. Either go into a man-to-man -man, or they're going to have to change into a 2-3. And that will open up the top of the key. Well, Robert put his free throw in. He didn't have any trouble last game. He was 8 for 9. No, no. He was steady. So was Jose Guzman. It was uh, Zach had a little problem. And, and Tim Young, who, who is an excellent free throw shooter. He's 70 to 80% on the season. Shot by Soto. Now he's their three-point shooter. Put one in there. And they, they've got to keep pressure on him. They have him covered by the, the taller Sam Crossan. And while Soto, Soto may have a little quickness advantage, Sam, I think, can shut him down with, with his height. Three-pointer. There's that bonus, I think. If Harbor can survive this slow stretch here with uh, Robert getting hot until Jose gets in there and Tim gets into the offense, Tim Young gets into the offense, and Sam. I mean, Sam Crossan is one of these guys that will, he's 10 and 10 every game out. And you can expect 10 points, 10 rebounds, and some good defense out of him. So Harbor jumps out to a 12-7 lead, 3.24 to go in the first quarter. Soto drives to the hoop, foul picked up by Guzman. Now, I didn't see that switch, whether that was a switch off of a screen or they came down and they had a different matchup. Sam was covering Soto earlier, uh, Sam Crossan, and then now they have Jose on him. So I, I think that's the way they're going to have a matchup. And with this extra height in here, number 43, Mike Gendro coming in, uh, that'll require a little bit more out of Sam and Zach. Well, Gendro gives Eddings a rest. Eddings goes to the Cupertino bench. They'll usually play seven or eight players, Cupertino will. Harbor usually will stick to seven. I think there was a little confusion, uh, a little water on the floor. I think Cupertino wanted the, the free throws on that. But the referee, Steve Jericki, said he was on the floor when he got fouled. Kubota looks low. Swings it. McGee on top. Arbor's doing a good job. This is the flex offense, and they're doing a pretty good job sliding through some of those screens. McGee throws up a, a short one. He's had a little trouble with his shooting so far. Ship Steve gets it over to Guzman for three. Boom. When both of those, when both of those young men get hot, it's going to be a long night for Cupertino if they stay hot. Well, Cupertino's going to take a timeout right here, I believe. 16 to 7 with 2.45 to go in the first quarter. There's a shot of the scoreboard. Well, Harbor's come out with their shooting. 
looking good. They're hitting their shots. They're shooting a very high percentage. Yes, you, you have to be. I, I think the key, I've watched Arbor enough, and I've kept helped out on the stats with them. If they can shoot 45%, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but if they shoot 45%, their deep half-court defensive pressure is good enough, they can win. They've beaten quality teams shooting only 43%, but once they dip below 40%, that's where they start to lose. They lose their the game if they dip below 40 and usually they're on the cusp between 40 and 43 but if they go 45 well coach Mike Gruber said in the beginning of the year in the newspaper he said that their whole season depends on how well they can rebound and play defense just because I know we can shoot and they came out right now showing that they can shoot they're shooting a very high percentage here getting a lot of good shots doesn't seem like a lot of defensive pressure by Cupertino out on the shooters yet they're really concerned with with Sam inside Zach a page inside and Tim young inside and so they're not quite extending and I told you that they would get those shots on the baseline which which was the three-pointer that uh, Jose got I don't think they respect their perimeter shooting from Harbor right now but well, I believe that's what was, that was remedied in the timeout yeah they're getting it inside nice job by Robert Shipsky excellent help side defense when you've got your big kid blocked out on the ball side someone dropped down and snacked it away from uh, Thorpe See, there they go. They've dropped into a 2-3. See, that's to cover the baseline now. Now you're going to get your free throw shots. Actually, maybe even a 1-4. Eh, I see what they're doing. Okay, they're extending out on the two guards, and they're matching up. It's almost like a nickel-type defense, a 1-3-type one, one, zone defense. Nice follow by Zach Page. Boy, Zach's just tough inside there. I, the big kid Thorpe is big and physical, but Zach's, Zach's as physical as anybody you want to see in a high school game. He's not quite the size, but he gets that offensive position. Well, he makes up with intensity. Nice move by big man Darren Thorpe. Gets fouled by Young, and he'll go to the free throw line. 17-7, 1.42 to go in the first quarter. 17-9, they just put up that two points. See, that's where the strength and the weight differential comes in. Thorpe was able to push Young back two steps closer to the basket and then get that drop step and that one step angle so Tim had to come from the side and he got called for the foul. You wait, when Tim Young's a senior, he'll be doing that and just dominating the game. Well, he's grown he, so much just in this year from the beginning until now. He does a pretty good job dominating the game right now, isn't he? the way it is. Well, people talk about he gets three or four block shots during a ball game, but that's only half the story because he makes so many people alter their shots when they come inside. It makes such a big difference. Hey, when you're talking about a couple of the surprises for Harbor's... Ooh, Zach Page, nice offensive board again. A couple of surprises at Harbor is their half-court defense, like Coach Gruber mentioned earlier, and their rebounding has come from that. And the fact that the half-court defense is all predicated on how, how well you can cover in the paint. And, and Tim does that. Nice look by Young. Page good, scores another two. Good transition basket. The way to attack a zone is to beat it back, flatten it out. They beat it back, they dropped it back out. And the, well, we'll get back to that when, when Harbor brings the ball down. Now see how they're pushing now. They're dropping down. Good idea. Sam, Sam Crossan came down to help. Good idea. The ball goes inside. You know there's, they're always going to look for it to get it to 55 Thorpe. And they're going to come down and they're going to give away 10 fouls inside or rather than just five for uh, Tim Young. Well, that foul was on Crossan. It won't be a shooting foul, so they'll take it out of bounds. Cupertino's ball, 19-9. to nine. 38 seconds remain in the first quarter. See, Harbor has to buckle now and make sure they continue their half-court defense. Covered the paint well. Good, good. See, they intimidate him into that pass. Harbor ball. Good hustle. Good defensive hustle by Harbor. See, now watch when, when the ball, player with the ball drives baseline and beats their player. Someone jumps out off of the screen and that time it was Tim Young that came out and jumped and made him give up, made him throw one extra pass. Good job defensively. So Harbor's going to hold the ball out here. There's 22 seconds remaining on the clock. Okay. Now with this type of defense, they'll go a 1-1-3. One, one, now they're extending it. You can't quite see the pattern there. You're going to you're going to see three shots at the foul line or foul line extend uh, at the elbow. It's soft 17, right at the corner of the free throw line and the baseline. Nice look. Way to stick with it. 
a go at, at the end of the first quarter. It's 19 to nine, Harbor leads, Cupertino. Bronco put it down, Bronco let it fly. It's got enough weight. My goodness, it's good! SoCal has won this football game! It is impossible to turn back the hands of time, but if we could, it would be special moments like this we would relive time and time again. The memory of these special feats can be captured with a plaque or trophy from Awards and Engraving Unlimited of Capitola, keeping the memory alive. We're back, 19 to 9, Harbor leads, ready to start the second quarter. Even though at the end of the first quarter, Harbor didn't get a score out of there, you have to be really pleased if you're Harbor coach Mike Gruber and the fact that they were able to attack, they got two shots inside, they got an offensive rebound, they had good shots, and it was on the rim at the buzzer. Really pleased with that, I would assume. Guzman on top, over to Crossan. Back to Guzman, he tries the long three-pointer. Hmm, in and out. Good rebound by Cupertino. They've got to get right back in the game right here, early in the second quarter. They don't want to let it get too far away. Soto, he's their main man. Scores about 11 points per game. Soto's probably the man they're going to want to watch. So get it to him on the perimeter and set him up on the outside against Thorpe where he's on the inside on the same side so they have both of their scores. Caboto tries a long one. Guzman with the rebound. Now see, for Harbor, that's a, that, that's a good sign that nobody else is really looking to hit those shots. Again, they're going away from their inside game right now, Harbor, but you can flirt with it a little Soto bit. Soto for three. It's there. Again, that's where they're going to have to go. It's going to be Soto and Thorpe that are going to bring them back, and they, Harbor really has to key on them defensively. Now look how they approach this. Now see the high post? You're going to have the high post. Cross in from the baseline. You're going to have a high post open. The only problem with bringing a high post out there is you, it makes you a little weaker offensive rebounding team, but you have a better shot. From, you'll have an open shot there as the ball goes to the baseline. Good job defensively by Jose Guzman. Well, I'm yeah. sure Harbor knows they need to key on those two people from Cupertino, Soto, and Thorpe. And they're doing a good job so far. I can see a little reason why, I mean, besides the obvious, that why Cupertino is a little sporadic. If you have two key scores, and I don't see a lot of contribution from the other people right now, and some of the ball handling is a little on the sporadic. It, they're making some poor decisions, and they're looking too much for those two to, to get do the job. Well, I think part of that's the defensive pressure by Harbor. They're doing a good job on those key people. Yes. You know, Cupertino has some talent, but i tell you one thing. They're well coached. That's the one thing you can notice. No basket. Young made a nice move there. Got the ball up. Was fouled, but referee Steve Jericki, there's a shot of him. He says it was before the shot. Now, see, that was important. The basket didn't count, but that's important. That's sending the message. You want to shove it down my throat, we're going to take it down your throat. That's a big key, key approach. And they're looking inside now. See, now, that's... That's okay. Well, they collapsed on Young that time. Soto, under the basket, has a little trouble handling it. Ooh, shot by big man, Tom Dickerson. Six right. foot two, senior forward, and his first shot. Kid has a touch, I can see. They probably bought him off there. Little offensive rebounding, or a little rebounding, but also because you can tell he's just a shooter. He's got the touch. They need someone else to score. Boston tries a three. Called on Guzman. That's two on him. That's going to be tough. We have a look at Coach Jack Holtorf. Now, he's one of those class coaches that you hear throughout the years. He's just 
been there a long time, and he's a good quality coach, and he's going to get these kids ready. I mean, they are ready, but he's going to get them playing well, and they're going to play the way he's going to want them to. Sabota hits the big three-pointer, left alone. Yep. It's tough to leave anybody alone from 20 feet when it, calls, when it counts for three points. Guzman tries to answer and misses. Now see, what we see on the both, both ends, Cupertino hit three perimeter shots, Harbor missed three other last four times down, all perimeter shots. I think Harbor wants to take it inside a little bit more, either hit the bomb or, or take it inside, but I, they might want to be a little bit more patient. Well, that last time down, Soto was having to work so hard, and he got open for a second, but he was in such a frenzy, he just tossed up an off-balance shot. Good defensive pressure by Guzman. But with Kobata, number 14, hitting that three-point shot, that's going to jump. Young with a nice hit. There you go, back inside. Keep going at the big guy. Their big guy has two fouls. Well, and if Har they lose him, it's more, it's more devastating to Cupertino than, say, Harbor losing their big kid. Harbor seems to have focused more on getting inside in the second quarter here. Back page, strips him. Oh. Nice block by Young. There's your message. There you go. Good hustle. Good clean play. No calls anywhere. Good. Soto called for carrying the ball. Now see, you had two people chasing the ball down there, which was good because a uh, point guard should never pick up your, your dribble out on that low on the baseline. 23-17. Harbor leads, 4.04 to go in the second quarter. Guzman. Well, that's unusual to post him up. I haven't seen that much. Look deep. Too far under. The big man. Thorpe can't make it go. A little pressure by Young. I tell you, he's cleaning the house after that shot. Nice just, pass. Just like a pulling guard. 55 missed the shot and just cleaned three people out there going for the ball. 25-17, 3.33 to go, second quarter. Kubota can't do it. Thorpe pulls it away from Young. Thorpe gets fouled as he goes to return up there. Foul called on Zach Cage. Now that's okay. See, they had good action on Thorpe. They kept pressure, pressure on Tim went for the quick block. He got past him, and then he didn't try to get back in there and get a foul. And that was up to Zach Page. He picked up a foul, his first foul. For him, that's not bad. Eight-point lead as we stand now. 3.25 to go in the second quarter. I think you have to call glass when you shoot it from the free throw line and like that. He didn't call that one, did he? Yeah. We'll, we'll take it off the board. <laughs> now, if Tim Young stays equal with Taryn Thorpe in terms of block shots, foul trouble, rebounds, and offense, Harbor will win the game. That's all he has to do is concentrate on staying even because Harbor has enough other weapons to take care of the rest. You can't give him set shots out there. Kubota tried another long one. He hasn't been shooting such a good percentage. He does have three points. He did hit a three-pointer earlier. 25-18, 3.03 to go, second quarter. I'm a coach. I'm an opposing coach. I'm the one that... Uh, you always remember the ones they make, not the ones they miss. Nice cut, nice cut. Good look by Young as he feeds... For cutting Zach Page for another two points. Page having quite an offensive game. Oh, yeah. And, and that's one of the things that's going to make Tim Young one of those blue-chip Division One players. He can pass and he can catch. And, I mean, that's, that was a beautiful feat and a, and a great cut by Zach. Soto, nice lean in. He gets another two. He's starting to heat up a little bit. 27-20, seven-point lead for Harbor. 2.22 to go. Second quarter. We're in the quarterfinals. CCS, boys basketball. Oh, good work. Good oh. work. That whole basket was created by Zach Page. He cleared the house. He, worked, he had his hand on the ball. He couldn't quite get it. Tipped it away. Tim Young comes up with it, puts it back up. Big, big play. See, see how they isolate 55 and 30 together. That's what they're going to try to do. I... And there's Tom, Tom Dickerson 
he's taking two shots and hit them both. Looked yeah. pretty smooth on his yeah, delivery yeah. there. I, I believe he came in just to hit that shot that, so they wouldn't have to sag off him and they couldn't double team down, down low. Jose Guzman gone a little cold lately. Had a good look at the basket, but just couldn't convert. Kaboto top to Soto for three. He's got it. See, they're not getting enough pressure on him coming out there. They, they've just got to do that. Well, Soto's had a good second quarter here. He's got 11 points now in the ball game, and it's 29-25. Cupertino within four. Crossing for three. Got it. I see Sam can hit that. And he doesn't take enough of them, I feel, and I think Coach Gruber feels the same way. And he's he has in this game. That's the first one he's hit, but you wait. Sam will put those in. He's well, that's studied. the second one he's taken in this game. He has uh, 15 for the year, I believe. Soto, quick turnaround. Now, big play, big play. Tom Dickerson, once again, offensive rebound and lays it in there. That's what you're looking. That's what the coach gets paid the big bucks for, to figure out, well, hey, this kid's got to do something. 32-27. He's also got them in man-to-man -man because he saw that his zone wasn't working. Uh, Harbor was just shoot, shooting set shots. And in a zone, I, I believe a zone is a really weak rebounding defense. And well, it's tough it, because you don't have a personal responsibility. It, exactly. You don't know who to block off. You have to go find it. And sometimes you, you cheat and you have a double assignment. 20 seconds left in the half. Good look. Oh. Good. Seems like Zach took his eye off the ball and was looking where he was, well, where I the think, rim was. I, I think he thought uh, Jose was going to shoot it because he was wide open. But 16 seconds to go. 32-27. Harbor leads. Taking the big kid out so he doesn't get foul number three. There you go. Substitution number 43. Mike Gendro comes in. Gives big Darren Thorpe a break for the last 16 seconds. Uh, I'll tell you... I'll tell you who's going to shoot it, 53 or 30. They're going to take the shot. And I, I really think 30 is going to get it and try to create, well, three seconds, three-pointer. Won't go. Ex three ex seconds on the clock. Short. Well, a big comeback by Cupertino in the second quarter. And as we, at halftime, Harbor leads over Cupertino, 32-27. When you come home hungry after a long, hard day's work, the cupboard's bare and you're too tired to go out, give Straw Hat Pizza a call. Straw Hat Pizza uses the finest, fresh ingredients and our special homemade sauce topped with real California cheeses. Straw Hat Pizza also has fast, free delivery right to your doorstep, which is handy when you don't want to drive or can't cross the street. For home delivery, call 458-9977. Straw Hat Pizza, best of all. There wasn't that many fouls, which is something to keep, they kept it running. We can hear you just barely, Rusty. There you go. Right. Santa Cruz Motors, two decades of dependability and a great deal more. Mazda cars and trucks. Oldsmobiles for every generation. Cars of your dreams vans and utility vehicles. On the road and off the road, Santa Cruz Motors means people you know, products you trust, and great deals. Santa Cruz Motors, over two decades of dependability and a great deal more. Does your home or landscaping need a little fixing up? Antolini's Landscape and Masonry Supply can help you make the right choices. Antolini Company stocks a large selection of brick, decorative rock, natural stone, glass block, and a complete line of tile supplies. With quality materials at reasonable prices and expert personal service, Antolini's will help you with any size job, start to finish. Antolini's Landscape and Masonry Supplies, 2806 Soquel Avenue, between 7th and Highway 1, Santa Cruz. Second half, just underway. They just inbounds the ball. Kubota on top. Gets it into their big man. I think they're going to try and get it into him more this half. Nice follow. Darren Thorpe gets his own rebound, puts it through, gets fouled. That's a foul on Zach Page. He had five points in the first half. Dickerson had six. Chris Soto led Cupertino with 11. Kubota had three. And McGee had two. That rounds out the scoring for Cupertino in the first half. For, ha for Harbor, Zach Page had eight points, seven for Crossan, eight for Shipsteed, five for Guzman, and four for Young. I don't think it's any great surprise or 
or uh, secret what uh, Cupertino is planning to do. They're trying to get it, the ball into Darren Thorpe right off the bat, and it, it works successfully. 32-30, you saw the scoreboard just underway in the second half. Harbor leads by two. Rebound by Thorpe. Harbor came out smoking in the first quarter, took a 10-point lead at the end of the first quarter, 19-10, and now Cupertino with a chance to tie or go ahead here. Well, Harbor's first half statistics were about, they shot about 48% from the floor. Nice, strong move by Darren Thorpe. Once again, Cupertino goes inside. Uh, I think they're going to keep going to the well until uh, Harbor adjusts and does something about that. One of the, there you go. One of the ways is to keep 55 in foul trouble, and then he's not going to keep banging it in offensively, and that's his third. Well, Cupertino will be in trouble if they lose Thorpe, their big man. Thorpe uh, signed a letter, and he's all signed and sealed. He's going to you know, University of Reno, and he'll be playing uh, football for them. He plays offensive and defensive line. Well, he's built like a football player. Big kid, too. They're not sure if he'll play offense or defense, but he played both in high school and uh, played it quite well. Nevada, Reno, I believe it is. Well, I think uh, Harbor really has to pick up their defensive pressure, and I'm surprised they haven't really extended a little bit more and pressured the guards a little bit more to start, to start this half. There you go. Now watch as the ball goes inside, number 40, Sam Cross, and will drop down. The reason Coach Hortloff, Hortloff, Holtoff, Holtorf, excuse me, uh, put in number 53, Tom Dickerson, was so his player couldn't drop off. And it was a good good move. Nice dish by Soto. Thorpe scores again. That's uh, seven points already in just a minute and a half of the third quarter. And I think that's their second lead of the game. The first one was the first bucket of the game. 34-33. Thorpe, rebound. He has just come out gangbusters in this third quarter. Oops. Might have gotten away with a the travel there, but he didn't come up. Oh, Guzman got away with a foul. He was hanging on yeah. Thorpe's arm. <laughs> Soto. 36-33. Cupertino takes the lead. Crossing tries a long one. Thorpe with a rebound. I think Harbor's a little disoriented. I, I'm not sure... They're all on the same offensive game plan, and defensively, they're just not doing it. It's simple as that. Ooh, that was a walk. Oh. He got away with a walk. That's two on Young. Thirty-three. 36, 36 points for Cupertino. They've come out and outscored Harbor in the third quarter. The score was 32-27 at half, so it's been a 9-1 run for Cupertino. The Pioneers come out strong in the second half. That's a little too much time on the football field. That's why the big kid doesn't have that touch from the free throw line. Well, he's but he, he's a good athlete. He's made a couple free throws, but uh, I've got him down for being uh, two of five. That's two of six. Soto. Thorpe. Thorpe. They're just not blocking him off. He's just going right through the middle of him. Somebody's got to lay a body on him. Five point lead for Cupertino. Good pass. Back page. Nice movement of the ball there. Yes. It's a cutting page. Page seems to know that when the ball goes down low, it's time to cut to the hoop. Well, they're bringing two people down, maybe sometimes even three down on Tim Young, and, and they're not allowing him to get the shot off because they, they need help on, or Thorpe needs help. So now what they're doing is they're just cutting off of that and passing it. There's a shot of Gruber, Coach Gruber, Coach of the Year in the FBCAL. Smart, smart move by Coach Holtorff. Take out the big kid right now when you got a little bit of a buffer, so he's got two fouls going into the fourth quarter, unless things turn around drastically. 
Crossan gets in there and knocks the ball loose, but Soto comes out of the pack with it. Young gets it knocked out of his hand. Young with a block. Stolen by Guzman. Now notice how the defense and the offensive approach of Cupertino really changes. Ooh. Guzman threw the pass up, crossing was looking ahead at the basket and just went off his body. Just a mental mistake. You have to keep your composure after that. 38-34, four-point lead for Cupertino, 4.46 to go in the third period. We're here at Bellarmine High School in, in uh, Santa Clara. Santa Clara. <laughs> I'll expect a lot more perimeter shots from uh, Cupertino with uh, this lineup in here. Good follow by Calvert. Got the offensive rebound and put it back in. That's his first bucket of the day. Harbor calls a timeout. 40 to 34, Cupertino leads by six. 4.24 to go in the third period. Harbor's just not doing it defensively. They're not pressuring the ball on the passes or on the perimeter, and they're not pressuring the ball into the post, and they're not keeping them off the offensive boards. They're not blocking out very well. Let's see if we can pick up the huddle there. No, but the one thing, in a situation like this, with this much of the game left, the coach has to keep the composure. You can, you can be loud, you can be boisterous, but you can't be, be degrading. Yeah. You, you, you can't show that. You have to show, hey, things are under control if we just do it this way, this right. way, and this way. Be very systematic about your approach to it. Be very patient with it. Because Arbor's not that far out of this. Well, there's still plenty of time. 4.24 remaining in the third quarter. Arbor trails by... Six points, 40 to 34. And it's just a matter of, of no defensive, really no defensive pressure, no blocking out. A lot of second shots for Cupertino in that last run. That was terrible defense by Cupertino and they got away with it. Now watch for the perimeter shot. Well, so much for the perimeter. Young. See, I think Young can rule the paint with this lineup in there. There you go, they got away with it. Well, he seems to have a little trouble with Thorpe. Thorpe, an experienced senior, going against an inexperienced freshman, obviously with a, uh, a good weight advantage. Uh, Young does strength. have a couple inches on him, but still, with the strength, as you say, it's, it's a tough thing for Young to deal with. Well, Paige, st Paige stood his ground there and got, got a over-the-back call, or at least a pushing call off of the boards, and that, that's important to establish. Good drive. Stepped on that end line. Crossan made a good move, but couldn't finish it. Went a little too low. You got to attack at the block, and he, he, he attacked about two steps below the block, and didn't have the angle. Well, they're going to bring Thorpe back in. Sends number 43, Mike Gendro, to the bench. I think uh, Coach Holtorf sensed that they don't have any offensive direction with, with Thorpe in there, and he, he doesn't want it doesn't want to let this lead get away, so he's, he's taking the gamble, putting the kid in now. Trying to get Tim Young in foul trouble also. Work it offensively. Soto on the perimeter, looks for Soto. He's got him down low. I see Guzman isn't giving him set shots, and I think 30 needs those, or Soto needs those shots. Well, he's done well on the set shots. The ones yes. where he's moving a little off balance, he hasn't had as much luck with. See, now the rest of the team isn't locking off on there. Good follow by Eddie. See how he, up his first basket. That's where Young does his job, and the rest of the team has to keep their players off. So Young keeps 55 out of there, Thorpe out of there. They're going to go in there all night. Young, nice move. It's going to be a game of the big man. Well, the big man's got to lay off him. He does have three fouls. Soto challenges. Good play by Timmy Young. Just his presence made Soto miss that shot. Offensive foul. I was surprised Robert went a little deep on that. I thought he'd dish it off and get a pass back. But that's, you have to make those things, those decisions really quick. And that's an aggressive mistake. And a call for the towel, do a little mop-up job, a little moisture under the basket. Go, 
Now again, I, I think Young's doing a good job down here defensively now. He's getting his position. He's, he's playing. Once uh, Thorpe gets the ball, he's, he's staying in the way of his shot, and he's keeping his, his player off the boards. What's hurting them is number 32 sneaking in there, 21. They're getting what we call the garbage shot, and they're not getting the block. They're not getting, not getting blocked off. Token pressure for Harbor. Just see what kind of mistakes they can lead Cupertino into. Thorpe inside. See, now Timmy, Timmy changed that shot. Everyone else took care of their assignments. One shot now. It was a good shot, though, I have to admit. Good strong rebound there it is. by Page. Left-handed, left side. Good turn. Nice. He looks like he's fired up right now. Yeah, he's tired of getting beaten up, and he's saying that back at you. It's going, coming your way. 42-38, 2.09 to go in the third quarter. Harbor trails by four. Led most of the first half, or throughout the first half. See, they're going to the old California delay. They're just going to pop out one at a time, keep the pressure on, try to use a couple minutes off the clock. This is where Harbor has to just take one step closer to a player, try to get a five-second call, get a, get a screen foul call. Here's a mismatch I think that Harbor can exploit. Well, you mentioned uh, Jack Holtorf being a coach for a long time at Cupertino. He's been there nine years, and before that, he spent 11 years at Lindbrook. And those Lindbrook teams were very good, very good. They were perennial CCS playoff teams. There's a shot of Jack on the bench in the middle. Minute and six to go in the third quarter, 42-38. Cupertino leads. They've managed to run off about a minute and a half here. Got McGee, number four, coming in. Going to give uh, number 21, Calvert, a break. So they'll go with their three-guard offense. Yeah, I think he's going all ball handlers because 32 is a forward, but he, he's more he's a pretty good ball handling forward. And There's again, small team in there. Yeah, if you're not going to take the ball inside, you're going to run off the clock. Use your quickness. 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. Harbors just got to wait for their opportunity. This is really hard offensively to not to make the mistake. Well, they've done a good job so far. They've run off more than two minutes, and that's quite unusual. What you might do defensively is just jump into a good double, good double, and make them go to it and hope you can beat them on, uh, force them into a bad shot. Well, hopefully a bad shot, maybe a five-second count, turnover, put that defensive pressure on them. 17 seconds. You don't get many five-second counts. The way this is run, this, this delay is set up. Now they're going to go into attack. It's going straight inside. We knew that. Four good job, seconds. Good job. Soto. Uh, Missed shot. So at the end of the third quarter, Cupertino Pioneers 42, Harbor 38. Hi, I'm Eric Johnson, founder and president of Eric's Deli Cafe. Why don't you come on inside and see the care we take in preparing all the food at an Eric's Deli Cafe. All of our soups, baked goods, and salads are made from scratch from our own special recipes with nothing but the finest ingredients. The cooks start bright and early each morning to make sure that everything we serve is just the way you like it. And our own truck delivers it fresh to you every morning starting at 3 a.m. Does that guy look familiar to you? At Eric's, we've made a personal commitment to our community by adding support to local charities and community events. We appreciate the support that you've given us over the past 13 years and want you to know that we will do our best on every visit that you make to an Eric's Tele Cafe so that it will be fast, fresh, and delicious. Here's to your health. Eric's Deli Cafe has more than 20 locations to serve you, including Scotts Valley, Santa Cruz, Capitola, Aptos, and Watsonville. Well, we're back, starting the fourth quarter. Harbor trails by four. Cupertino had a great third quarter. They outscored Harbor 15 to six. And this is it, eight minutes to go. 
42-38, Cupertino leads. Harbor will have the ball to start the fourth quarter. Well, Harbor's got to be fairly happy that they held them for two minutes and they didn't get a, a, a good shot off. And now they're going to start out, ooh, a 2-3 zone. This is interesting because I think Harbor did very well to start the game with against the zone. Crossan had a there good look and very good. There you go. They're going to make him come out and play a man because if they play a man, Timmy's going to take him inside, Timmy Young. They stay in the zone. I, I can't see Cupertino standing in the zone more than a, a minute or two. Moto on top. He's looking down for Thorpe. There's Soto. Comes off a screen. See, they didn't have help off of that screen. Nice follow by Thorpe. Thorpe has really come alive in this ball game. Again, it's all the offensive rebounding. They're getting most of their points off of that offensive rebounding in this half. He's got 11 points in the second half and five in the first. 16 for the game for Thorpe. Forty-four thirty. Cooper, you know, it's back to a man now. See, I, I didn't expect him to be in his zone for very long. 44-40. 44-40. Did I say 44-30? I'm sorry. <laughs> Good Young. Cut. Nice cut. Kid has a touch. Really has a touch. This one's, this one's going to be a nail, nail biter, folks. 44-42. Harbor pulls to within two. 6.30 to go in the ball game. It's important for Harbor defensively. They've got to shut them down a couple times down. They're really important. You can't trade baskets. I mean, yes, they're down only two, but they have to show this half they can shut them down. Soto on top, swings it off to Eddings, Eddings to Soto, Soto, nice move, trickles in, he gets that friendly roll. Friendly no call also, might have been a little shuffle step there. Soto's got 15 on the game, nice break up by Calvert. 46-42, four point lead for Cupertino. 5.58 to go in the fourth quarter. In comes Dickerson now. See, he's in there to give him an, another offensive shooting threat, I, I think, at least what we've seen before. Well, he certainly gave him a lift in that key uh, third period run. But he's back now to try and do the same. That might have been a, just a little case of impatience there, but uh, they're high school kids. There you go, keep the pressure on. Good hustle by Dickerson. He slapped that ball. It looked like Harbor was going to come up with the steal. Soto, maneuvering on top. Watch the inside play right there. Both of those guys are just pushing. Yeah. Ooh, big foul. Big foul on Darren Thorpe. Picks up his fourth foul with 5.28 to go in the ball game. Again, they were just pushing back and forth. He's been, he's been leaning on Big Timmy for the whole half, and then he's he got Timmy a little mad, and Tim, Tim started shoving back, and then he, sh he shoved, shoved Tim back, and, and that's what the official saw. Saw that he's just getting an advantage out of it. It's tough when you're six, nine and a half kid doing that. Nice. Robert Shipstead hits the big three-pointer. Pulls Harbor to within one point. 46-45, 5.07 to go in the ballgame. Real good sign for Harbor. They needed someone to step up. Now they have to pressure the shot. There you go. Shipstead with the rebound. Get him out of their game. Get Cupertino out of their game. Change the style of their play. Guzman looking for a cutter. There's Nothing three. there. Crossing over to Shipstead. Take Back two. to Crossing. Wide open Guzman for three. It's yeah. There. Ah, love it, love it. Jose Guzman hits the big three. Puts Harbor back in front. 48-46 with 4.41 to go. As Cupertino calls a quick timeout. I realize I'm a little partisan there, but I've watched these young men play all year long and they're an exciting bunch. And I tell you, Robert Chipstead comes out, hit the big bucket to get on the rotation. Timmy played tough defense, pick up four on number 55, Darren Thorpe. That's a turnover, change of possession. Robert hits a shot, comes back. Jose's in the rhythm. They've got to continue it. There's a shot of Mike Gruber barking out some instructions. Again, uh, I, I can tell you almost precisely what he's saying. He's keeping positive and saying, do the things we do. Defensively, maintain the pressure. You've got to block out. Offensively, we take the shots we want to take. If we go to the perimeter, hit it. 
if it's wide open. If not, dump it into Timmy. In fact, I'll tell you, I bet the ball's going into Timmy, and then Zach, either Timmy will come out high and Zach Page will go low or vice versa. And they're going to set up one of the good three-point shooters on the side of, of Tim Young, and they're going to pound it in that way. But I also think they want to maintain their tempo. Cupertino's second quarter, middle of this, or the first part of this quarter, maintain things at their tempo. A little slower, more deliberate. Harbor needs to get a, a garbage basket here and there, and they feed on it. Well, that was a big killer right there for Cupertino. Two times consecutively down for Harbor. They hit three-pointers. A big swing of six points to give Harbor a lead. 48-46, two-point lead for Harbor, 4.35 to go. Okay, I see what they're doing now. They're, they're going to either go three-pointer out here or try to pound it in and get Timmy, uh, Timmy in foul trouble. But I tell you, Harbor's going to take the ball inside offensively, I tell you. Well, Cupertino taking their time. Good they're going to get a good, good shot. See, that's Soto. Again, Harbor's got to be happy that that's the, only, the best shot they can get. That it, was a tough shot. It was close in the key, close shot, but that had to be a really good shot. There it is. They're going to get three in there. Crossing for three. Count it. It's there. Now, who do you cover? You got Chipset hit a three-pointer. Guzman hit a three-pointer. Crossing hit a three-pointer. You got Timmy Young in there that can hit anything inside. Well, it's a tough dilemma because if you all go out to the perimeter, it really opens up that inside game. Well, see, they triple team Timmy when the ball went inside. Nice block shot. Ah. Oh. There you go, oh. big rebound. Now they're controlling the inside. Oh. Okay, that's all right. Little dribble, dribble turnover, but you get excited, you do a good play, you forget you put the ball on the ground. Still a good job. 51-48, Harbor leads by three. Uh, Cupertino's ball, 3.37 to go in the ball game. See, now the Cupertino coach, Holtorf, knew he was losing the inside battle. Had to get his big kid inside there because this is his hope. Well, he brings Thorpe in with the last... And for the last three minutes and 37 seconds. Now what, what, what Timmy's got to do is try to push him a step or two further. Push him a step or two further. He's got fouls. Soto for three. It's good. Big basket. Ties big it basket. up. 51-51. I, th I think I might see him go to a little delay. No, no. I see what they're going to do. Tough shot. Good board. Uh, alternate possession, though, goes to the team. Yes, I think Cupertino will get the alternate possession. Well, the towel's getting a workout today, uh, picking up all the sweat off the court. Well, Harbor's in the bonus, so next time someone gets fouled for Harbor, they will be going to the free throw line. Harbor also has the possession arrow in their favor after Cupertino inbounds the ball now. 3-12 to go, tie ball game, 51 all. Now what you have to think if you're Harbor is you got to be physical on the defensive boards. You can risk a foul. You, Timmy Young can risk pushing 55 a step or two further. And Zach Page has to get every loose ball out there. And Sam Crossan has to, has to help out. Well, Those, I think if there has been a weakness for Harbor, it has been the, the second and third shots that Cupertino's been getting. They, they have been very poor on the defensive boards. 51-51. Two fifty-five to go. Tremendous defensive play. Soto loses the handle. Sam Crossan just snuck in there and got a hand on it. Bounced it off Soto's leg. Big play. Big play. You don't look for much of that from a sophomore, but I tell you, this kid Sam Crossan, he gains about, gets about two inches, and he's a bona fide Division One player. Guzman tries the long three. Young gets the rebound and gets fouled on the way up. He'll go to the line for two shots. Foul on Caboto. Boy, they went for the home run right away. I was surprised at that. But Timmy, Timmy stepped around. Dickers, or, uh, Thorpe, excuse me, got inside, put it up. That would have been five fouls on uh, Thorpe if he didn't block it. Or 14 didn't come in. And... Caboto got the foul. Thorpe playing with four fouls. Nice. Timmy made that free throw. Had a little trouble from the free throw line in the last ball game. Yeah, but that's uncharacteristic. He uh, is a good shooter. Just look at his touch. Look at the roll on the ball. He's a good free throw shooter. Makes two. And, and it's ice. Uh, a freshman kid hitting two at CCS game with 241 left. Harbor leads by two, 53-51. Two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Big defensive possession now. Jose's got to keep pressure on. Oh, good, good help by uh, Soto. 
Good help by Shipstead. Good defensive help. Now good decisions. Good offensive decisions of what, what they need. Now, patient. Take your shot. Take your shot. There's your shot. Back out. Mm -hmm. There's three. Count it. Three for Guzman. Oh, sorry. Go. A little early. Control. Good, Robert. Ooh. Good defense by Cupertino yep. to get a hand up. Soto. Yeah. Ah. Makes it. Tie ball game. 53-53. 1.55 to go. Good hustle, though. Jose got back there. Got a hand in his face. Just a really ice shot. 32 inside there for Cupertino's getting... Oh, oh another bad pass. Harvard's got to take a little better care of the ball on offense. They may try and slow it down here. As Cupertino calls a timeout with 1.35 to go. It's all tied up. 53-53. We're in the fourth quarter here. You might look for the, for the California or the double stack the delay... Well, they worked it so well in the first half. They ran off two and a half minutes. It's uh, a tough situation for Harbor. I think they may need to take a gamble and try some double teams or something. Well, you're still tied. You're still tied. What you're going to have to do is jump up on the top. <coughs> they have me. some fouls to give yeah. also. Yeah, you're going to have to jump out on the top, make them try to drive, and drop Timmy down and hope he can block the shot or influence the shot and drop your help side away from the ball half of the court drop them down for the offensive re or defensive rebound it's easy said when you do it that way but when you're playing it it's it's a lot tougher will they come out and play real aggressive going for steals i i think with the fouls to give i think you're going to watch they're going to go for steals as they come off the double t off the double post as they pop out mm -hmm. in other words they're going to double team where they're not only in a dangerous there. area yes. in case they don't right. get it they won't be in trouble and there's always someone to pick a role someone that will roll Okay, well, Cupertino breaks their huddle. They ran the ball in the first half, at the end of the first half, with a lot of success. They ran a couple minutes off the clock. There's 1.35 to go. High score, 53-53. Cupertino with the ball. Let's Again, see what they do. A, essentially a four-guard offense, and that's what he's going to do. Oh, he's They're just going spread to straight, out. straight spread. Oh, big mistake. Ooh. There you go. Now Harbor's in the driver's seat. You know, I think if you look at that play on the replay there, uh, uh, not on our replay, when you run it back on the tape, like, <laughs> I don't think that was over or back. I think he, well, he, he was I, okay. I'll play the devil's advocate. I'll say the official made a good call because I think the gentleman, before he touched it, stepped on the line. So okay. if you step in the line, you're officially out of bounds. Right. While the ball broke the plane and didn't land on the backcourt, he stepped on the line, which made him an ineligible Sure. Player to tip it. I don't think he did it though. <laughs> yeah. But Harbor have to takes make the ball. Harbor will take the break. <laughs> yes. They'll take it. It's 53 53. There's 125 to go. We've got a real good ball game here. Harbor will now have the ball, and it'll be interesting to see what they do with 125 to go. Will they run some clock and wait for the last shot? Or will they come out with a set play? I think what they'll do is they'll, well, I can say either of two things. I think they're going to take their first good shot. And I'm talking about in the paint or a set shot from the areas he wants to take it. In from. a delay offense? It, well, not necessarily a, a delay, more of a slow, a deliberate offense. I don't think he'll go straight out in a delay. But okay. then again, he always proves me wrong. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Who knows? They may throw it in and Shipsteed may hit a three. Yeah, we'll all go home and <laughs> say, shake our head. What the heck did he do there? Okay, now they're in man, which is good. You want to determine that. Looks like they're okay. dropping back now. Okay, there you go. You see what you do. Okay. 122, 53, 53. Yep, critical this is his delay critical game. situation here for Harbor. Tie score. Now see this is this is really harder to do than you think. Uh, to delay the game that delay the ball that long. See right Ooh, there. Foul called on number 21, Calvert, as he tried to but, go for Zach Page. Now, Page had some trouble last game from the free throw line. I believe he was 0 for 5. Yes, and I think if I were Cupertino, I could live with that foul. 107 to go, 53-53. Zach Page goes to the free throw line. But you know what? He's Zach, hit, he hit a free throw last time to the line. Zach's got a, got a big heart. And I think he's a tough kid, and he knows how important this is to his teammates. Uh, I'll tell you. I, I don't think he'll pull the screen. I think it'll go in. Wouldn't bet my house on it. Well, Page misses. Cupertino with the ball. 103 to go. 53-53. Here's the California delay, I think. 
Yep. Go to that double post up yep. high. Now this is where they're going to jump. See, now that's where Soto they jump. Soto has the ball Good in choice. his hands. Good choice. No foul, no foul. Close to a five-second count there. Yeah, that should be. Looks well, like it. it. What, 44 seconds to go. 53-53. Cupertino with the ball. They're going to run this clock down unless they that's get a layup. Wow. I count quick. See, now 55 knows he's going to be a release all the time now. Don't listen to the coach there. You 30 seconds. Get up there. 25. Ooh, foul by Guzman on Soto. Not bad. Make them take the ball in. They're not in foul trouble, so make them take the ball in. Now, now you got a, a, a different... They'll just take it from out of bounds. Yeah. No free throw shot here. No. But see, now this is a tougher situation, the out of bounds play. Now they have to get set up in what they have to do. That was the fourth team foul for Harbor. Both next foul, they'll both, they'll both be in the bonus. Harbor's already in the bonus. See, now it's already trapped where they don't want it trapped. Okay, good trap. 17 seconds, 53-53. See, they know there's a release right out there. Big 55. 10 seconds Darren to go. Cole. They're going to have trouble getting a good shot off. Kaboto challenges, makes it. Five seconds to go. Timeout called with four seconds. That's 55, a big shot. Big 53. shot. Cupertino takes the lead. Kaboto challenged Young and threw it high off the glass. Young gave him a good pressure, but he just got it over him. It was amazing. I thought for sure Kaboto would have some trouble, little guy that he is. Yeah, he was off balance, one handed, but hey, that's that's what makes the game so exciting is the and so interesting is sometimes the ball goes in, sometimes the ball doesn't. Well, 55-53. Cupertino takes the lead with a two-pointer. Kaboto challenged. Young made it. Now, it, Harbor has four seconds. Tough part, four seconds. Now, if it were eight seconds, you'd say, okay, you're, you're in good in good hands. But the one thing is they do have is, is now Cupertino has to gamble, and they can't allow you to take a three-pointer. Now, one thing Cupertino probably would not want to do is foul here. No, no, no. They're in, they're, they would send Harbor to the line with a one-on-one, -on -one, so they want to make sure they play off them. What about Harbor taking the ball and penetrating like crazy? You can probably do it in four seconds. Yeah. The only, I, I, I think what they might do is try to get the ball. You want to at least get it to the hash mark or at least pass the, the inbounds pass past the first third of the court. So that gives you four seconds to go at least the next third of the court because you, you can't figure to get it closer than 22, 23 feet and, and be open for a shot. So that's what you're going to do is, is you want to try to get a deep pass. Well, don't go for half court. Cupertino, given some pressure, they're all, they're all up. This is surprises me too is that Harbor is that is that deep too. There you go. Good choice, good well, choice. Boston called a timeout. It was an unusual defensive set, I would say, for Cupertino to yeah. see all five men pressuring the ball way up. Yeah. And I also I also think that was an unusual offensive attack. I that's uh, unusual to see all four that shallow. Well let's see if we can get a sound into the huddle there and see if we can pick up what Harbor's gonna do. I think what he might do is put two and a half four. You want to put two and a half court to at least alleviate some of the pressure. Spread it out a little bit. What he would be trying to do is basically you put, put a box, do one where he comes up, and it looks like he's going to put a pony screen and he goes deep. Well, if, if the gentleman or the player covering the ball plays deep, you can't get you can't get away with it. And I didn't see how they lined up, but I think he did play deep. The man covering the ball. They may come back and change their whole defense, which is something they may come back and yeah, sit sit deep. But I think I think it's a good idea to put some pressure on with only four seconds. You don't want to allow Harbor to get the ball right up the court. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. But I I would have expected more token pressure to tell you the truth. Four seconds left. 55-53. Hey, look on your sidelines. Look at your sideline. Guzman. Oh. Two. One, tries it, oh! oh! On the rim, and oh, tough, tough break. Tough shot for Guzman, tried a 30-footer. Good shot, though, good shot. Hit the front of the rim, and Cupertino stunned Harbor, 55-53. Well, they got a better shot than they could have expected, put it on the front of the rim, it was right there. Tough game, tough game. But you know, Harbor's got a lot of young kids out there, and. and Unfortunately, they'll remember this, but I'll tell you, I'd hate to be playing them later on in the years as Timmy gets older and Sam Crossing gets older and Zach Page is only a junior. 
Well, they definitely will have a strong team next year, and I think we'll see them back at least this far or further next year in CCS. Uh, tough one, especially for the senior, Jose Guzman. Boy, he did everything right there, put it up. It looked good from this angle, too. It looked like it was going to go. It was, uh, he got the ball deep and had to travel a good three-quarters of the court with the ball. Got up about 30 feet in front of the basket, right center court, let it fly and hit the front of the rim. And Cupertino holds on to a 55-53 victory here. Again, a stunning end. Like we said, uh, it's not they're a Jekyll and Hyde type team, but you can see why. They've got a good shooter, they're well coached, and they've got a dominant big man inside. Really tough kick. Tough, tough to beat that. Well, they came out in the second half, Cupertino, and really played an outstanding game. They jumped right on Harbor in the third quarter, outscored them 15 to 6, and then played them tough right on down. They played pretty even in that last quarter. Well, we want to thank our sponsors, Eric's Deli Cafe, Awards Engraving Unlimited of Capitola, Straw Hat Pizza, Antolini's Landscape and Masonry Supply, Santa Cruz Motors, KRZ Television is a service of United Artists Cables. I want to thank our director, Rusty Reed, technical director, Chuck Salsman. Camera was Mark Lagan. Ron Lothi, Damon Meyer, production assistant, Jim Meyer. A special thanks to the Central Coast Section Commissioner, Nancy Lazenby, Laser. She's the commissioner. The athletic director here at Bellarmine High School, Leo Ruth. Our next telecast, one week from tonight, if, if there's a team still in the running, could be Harbor Girls or Soquel Girls. CCS Championship game possibly next week. So that's it from Bellarmine High School in Santa Clara. CCS uh, quarterfinal game, Harbor goes down. 55-53 to Cupertino. And that's a wrap. So for Dan Gruber, Gary Ty saying so long.